and welcome back. Welcome back to Jeff Kanange live here at Susan Television on the bench tonight. The strikers, that's right, the unions are on the bench and they are agitating. Imagine the KMPDU is in its 21st day. Uh, the Kenya Clinical Workers, the KUKO, is on its third day. And the Lab Workers Union, NAMLO, is on its second day. And they said they are not letting up. Peterson Wachira is the one who represents KUKO. Dr. Davji Atella represents KMPDU. And Pius Nyakundi representing NAMLO. Gentlemen, continuing with our conversation, Dr. Atella, I asked you before the break, I said, look, you have a history of strikes. And you mentioned 1972. I didn't even know that was 50 years ago. But the latest ones uh, this century was around uh, this 2011, 2013, 2017, and now. Nothing has been achieved. Uh, what do you think will be? Are we trying to reinvent the wheel? Uh, I must say that a lot have been achieved by the strikes. I mean, Kenyans need to actually thank the union because prior to the 2011 or prior to the 2010 constitution, every doctor used to graduate and resign from government. Mm -hmm. They used to graduate and they go to the private hospitals or leave the country. But then because of the union, the first strike of 2011, doctors began for a functional facility. They wanted to have equipment in the hospitals, they wanted to have reagents in those hospitals, they wanted to have manpower in the hospitals, and then they wanted doctors to be paid better. And that is what made doctors to start being retained in uh, the, the public service. That was the strike of 2011. The strike of 2013 did not go for long. The strike of 2017 now changed, did, did a paradigm shift in terms of doctors being employed in the public sector because it also changed the, 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 the collective bargaining agreement now protected the doctors. And therefore, many doctors now seeing the need to work in the public facilities, meaning it brought value for Kenyans to access care in the public facilities mm. and the public hospitals, unlike before when there were, there were no strikes. Again, in this 2017 strike, we had a collective bargaining agreement which came into force after a hundred days strike. I mean, the leaders of the union at that point had to be jailed for the government to give in. The church leaders talked about it, the politicians talked about it, and the collective bargaining agreement is a contract mm. that is in compliance to the constitution of the country, is compliance to ILO Convention 98, whereby an employer cannot just wake up and, and violate it. Then, today we are on strike to actually have this collective bargaining agreement implemented. And what are we asking for? We are asking for the government to employ doctors, 10,000 doctors in five years. Because then we have hospitals in this country that have, are totally understaffed. We were, three days ago, we were in, uh, in uh, Kirinyaga. The whole of Kirinyaga County has only 14 doctors with a population of 650. Mm. The same applies in counties across the country. Yet we have doctors who have graduated to the tunes of about 4,000 who are not employed. As a country, we need about 50,000 doctors to reach the WHO ratio of one to 1,000. So when we are on strike, it is for the public to benefit, that the waiting time that they're having in the hospitals need to be reduced. That when you go to the hospital, instead of staying for 24 hours to see a, uh, to see a doctor, you we make it lower. Instead of being set, told that the clinic has to be three months, it has to be shortened. Mm. That's the essence. Okay. Pius, let me go to you and ask you real quick. Uh, first of all, welcome. Nice, nice to see you. Um, when lab workers go on strike, Kenyans suffer even more. What is the purpose? What is the point? Uh, first of all, Jeff, thank you for hosting us in this show. It's our first time to be here as a union. Uh, just to take note, this is for the first time in the history of Kenya, the laboratory workers are going on strike. Unlike our colleagues from other unions who are going on strike because of the CBA, ours, some issues are very simple because it doesn't even need any uh, financial issues. It doesn't need a budgetary implication on that. We are asking for a recognition agreement, which is a right and not a privilege. Article 54.1 of the Labor Relations Act of 2007 stipulates that an employer shall recognize a union which is legally registered. In this case, we are talking of a union that was registered in 2018. Today, it's 2024. We've had a request since 2021. Last year, July 13th, after meeting the Minister of officials, we requested for the same. December 5th, we requested and reminded them that we need to sign this recognition agreement. Today, they have not given any response. We went further and requested for a meeting with the Minister of officials in writing. They received the letter. To date, they have not given us any response. So we feel, of, we feel offended and discriminated because as our colleagues are discussing about the CBA, we are here uh, requesting for the recognition agreement 
which the ministry has refused to sign with us, and other 45 county governments, 43, 44 actually, because only three county governments have signed the recognition agreement. That is Bungoma, uh, Embu, and Nyandarwa counties. Mm. Mr. Senwashiro, let me ask you this. Mm. Your strike is in day three now. Yes. How long can you sustain it? How long can clinical workers sustain? Are you going to go the whole hog like KMPDU? Uh, Jeff, let me say that, uh, number one, we do not derive any pleasure from strikes and from seeing patients suffer. Mm. In fact, if it were up to us in the first place, we would not even have gone on that strike. We did a petition on 4th of March. We gave the employers 14 days. They never acted. We actually did a joint petition, all of us. Then after the uh, 14 days, we came out and when the KMPD was going on strike, because we actually had the option of all going uh, on strike at the same time, we came out and we told the employers, we want to add you another seven days because we actually do not want to go on strike because Kenyans are going to suffer. Then after that, and uh, because of the inaction, now we gave a seven day strike notice. So we actually gave them a full month. They were fully aware of the challenges that we were undergoing, the demands that we had, but there was no even a meeting to discuss and try and bring solutions to the issues at hand. And that is how we found ourselves on the strike. So if it were up to us, of course, we would say that even we are ready to go back anytime, including tomorrow, if we are able to uh, arrive at a solution at a point where we can say that we can say there is goodwill, we have confidence in the structures put in place to ensure that we can be able to um, get solutions to our demands. Mm. But then that ball is not on our court. It is on the employer's court because whatever we're asking for, they're the ones to actually provide. And so anytime they want us to go back, like now the Council of Governors, uh, that is the 47 county governments who actually took us to court in 2021 because we went on a strike after the conciliation failed, a report was given detailing that actually the employer refused to come to the table. They took us to court. The same court gave an order instructing them to come to the table and conclude the CBA. They declined. Mm. And so they are the ones to actually determine when we are supposed to go back to work, because... Do Dr. Atala, right now, yeah. speaking of courts, you're defining a court order no. as we speak. It depends on uh, interpretation of different people, but as a union, we are not defining any court orders. They've uh, given it another 14 days. They say, you know, stop the strike, 14 days, talk. And as, as I said, the reality is that the government is on strike. We had a meeting with government on 21st of, this, of, of March, where we prioritize the issues that we addressed to them, the 19 issues, onto different categories, the immediate ones, the midterm, and the long-term one. We had another invitation for a meeting on 27th that we sat with the government, and as I told you, the government walked out of this particular meeting. It's a clear manifestation and indication that they are on strike. Uh, and, and when the court gave orders today, it says that uh, the, the strike is suspended. The strike of government is suspended so that they can have a sitting with us to have the discussion of this. So we have joined the government on the strike. And that's why our strike has to continue until the government sit down and solve the issues that we raised. For a very long time, we have always complied to uh, return to work. Mm. Today, if we call off the strike and go back to work, all our issues will gather dust in the closets. And that's the reality of what happens. The government only negotiates and handle issues when there's a crisis, when we don't go to work. And as we are currently, it is government that is causing harm to the patients and to the people. Because as doctors, one thing I must say that you can only cause harm to a patient when you have the patient. But when you leave the hospitals and you go home, it is now the responsibility of the government, which we pay tax to, to take care of the of, 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 mm. yes. Piers Nyakundi, let me ask you this. Uh, as Lab Workers Union, what do lab workers want? What is the biggest grievance right now? Because you say it's not about this 2017 CBA. What do you guys want right uh, now? Jeff, as I've already said, first is the recognition agreement. We are not going back to job till the government, the national government, that is the Minister of Health, and the 44 county governments who have not signed the recognition agreement to sign the agreement. We also have an issue with the risk allowance. Uh, Jeff, uh, our colleagues who have been promoted job with K or are designated to uh, medical laboratory officers, they all lose their risk allowance. And what they are even being paid is 3,000 shillings. When these officers have been promoted to job group K, that, that one does not mean that they cease to be officers who are working on the bench. 
they actually handle hazardous uh, infections. And uh, the government withdrawing that uh, risk allowance, we've tried to engage them uh, since last year. We've engaged the SRC, we've engaged the MOH and the county governments. They are taking us into circles. We also have an issue uh, with the staff. Our laboratory, uh, laboratories uh, are understaffed. The government currently has a paltry uh, less than 5,000 working government. You get some staff, uh, only one lab officer working at night in an hospital like Kisi level six hospital. We also have an issue where our contracted staff uh, who have been working under UXC and Global Fund, we have people who have worked on contract for the last 15 years. That is uh, the Global Fund supported staff working, uh, supporting the TP program. Their contract expired last year, December that first. To date, they are on duty. They don't have any contract letter. They don't have any communication. They don't have salaries. So we are telling the government, you cannot have the strategy of use and dump. These are workers that have diligently served Kenyans. Mm. Dr. Tala, um, speaking of money, I understand the government disbursed the 2.4 billion shillings intended for interns. Yes, uh, that's what I saw on the uh, letter that I wrote yesterday. But I think the government has come out to be quite extractive and exploitative to the workers rather than being uh, inclusive and objective in what they're saying. Uh, the 2.4 billion that has been released is for all the interns, that is for the nurses interns, for the clinical officer interns, and the doctor interns. And with that particular budget, they went with a caveat and says that uh, the doctors will be paid as per the Salary and Remuneration Commission's a guideline of, to, of, of, of 13th March 2023, 2024. Which, which actually contravenes the collective bargaining agreement. It has reduced the salary of the medical intern doctors by 91%, which ideally violates the rule of law. So there's no way that somebody can just wake up and decide unilaterally to reduce salaries of doctors that have been negotiated by 91%. Then we say it's 2.4 billion. Yes, they're putting like that because they are trying to uh, do a public relations with the, with the issue. But ideally, the money that are going to be paid to those medical intern doctors that we have told not to pick the letters is a reduction of 91 percent. It's a violation of our agreement. And therefore, I keep saying, and we saw it last year when Salary and Redemption Commission decided to by themselves uh, take away the non-practice allowance for doctors across the country. We have seen it in Meru County where the uh, the, 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 uh, the Auditor General decided to say that the call allowance that was negotiated in CBA should be removed. So ideally, no doctor is safe if the government can act with impunity, with arrogance, to reduce the wages of doctors that have been negotiated. At the same time, we are seeing them putting a lot of taxes. Ideally, as workers and as a union, we know government's role is to take taxes. We know that business and, employ and, and private employers are to take profits. But as a union, we have to bargain for wages in this context. So when taxes rise, we expect our wages to go higher. And that's why even in this strike, we are asking for salary increase. Because the last time doctors got a salary increase was in 2016. So ideally, the interns need to be paid even more. We are, they need to be paid 50% more from what the, uh, the, the ministry are finding that they're, that they're handing more now. Yeah. They, ideally, in the context of the current inflation, that the current situation, from 2016, what we negotiated, they need to be added 50% more, not reduced by 91%. President Washira, real quick, uh, what would make you stop your strike today? What would convince you? Uh, Jeff, we have uh, 10 demands, but um, our bare minimum, I think are around six, we have the agreement on the risk allowance that we already signed with the ministry in 2023. We have the collective bargaining agreement, but even the court has directed that we must be able to uh, conclude. We have the universal health coverage staff, uh, together with the interns, the CHAP, the National TB and HIV program, who have been in contract for 15 years. And they have actually um, contravened the law in that they, they are renewing the contract more than once, as provided in the law. And so we are saying they must be put on a permanent and pensionable establishment. Of course, the other thing is about uh, what my brother Davji talked about. You cannot reduce the salary of the interns, and especially do so with impunity, because the body that is mandated to provide a structure, an establishment for the interns, is the Public Service Commission. It did so and gave job groups. But then from nowhere, we are seeing the Salaries and Remuneration Commission coming up with abstract figures 
that are not based on anything and telling us that now this is what your interns are supposed to be earning. And so uh, if we're able to get that plus now the career progression guidelines, then for us we'll say that now we can take this, we can go back, we can continue negotiating on the others. But these are things that we must get because they have proven that the moment you get into that return to work formula and you go back to work, they're not going to come back to the table until the next time that you are going on strike. And none of this looks rosy. I mean, it doesn't look like there's light at the end of the tunnel, does it? Uh, there's no light yet. There's no light the yet. The light has to be lit by the government. Okay. Gentlemen, we're going to continue this conversation very shortly. We're going to take a break, continue reading off the news. Peterson Washira, Dr. Davji Atella, and uh, Pius Nyakundi, hang tight, relax, and we'll come back to you and talk some more. And then we'll get reactions from you as well. What do you think of the ongoing doctors, clinical officers, and lab union officials on strike right now? What are your thoughts? Keep tweeting at Kwenanga Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya, the hashtag is JK Live.